Hey everybody, before I start this video, I just want to take a minute to sort of uh, explain what we're trying to accomplish in this video. I apologize, usually when I'm making these videos, I'm explaining things to my camera as I go. With this job, I had a really hard time focusing on that because it was such an alien environment for me. I'm from Washington State, so I'm mostly used to working on you know, fir trees and stuff like that. So in this video, we're working on coconut trees. You know, I'm halfway across the world with a crew I'm not that familiar with using tools I've never seen before. I've never even seen a coconut tree before, so I was way out of my element on this one. So I had a really hard time um, explaining things as I went, but there were a few things I wanted to mention that I forgot to really do a very good job, you know, talking about it in the video. So, you know, first and foremost, what we're trying to do with this job, what we're trying to accomplish is we've got 50 coconut trees that we have to maintain. So in Hawaii, coconut trees, they're everywhere, they're really numerous, and they're a huge liability for people who own them. Hawaiians, you know, are actually legally obligated to maintain these trees because what happens is they grow new fronds, the fronds die, they fold down, they fall off. They also grow coconuts, they grow cocos all year long and they grow a lot of them. And those falling around people, extremely dangerous too. So believe it or not, every tree in this video was done six months ago. They grow super fast. So. John has some contracts where they'll do the cocos three times a year just because they're such a huge liability. So we're going through, we're removing the, the, we're removing the coconuts out. Some of them are younger than others, but we're removing those. We're removing the parts that are gonna become the coconuts. We're removing the fronds that are going to be dying and falling off soon before they do that. So we're just trying to make this safe, you know, for, uh, th this is like a, it's like a condo place for tourists. And so we're just trying to make the coconuts safe is the goal on this job. And like I said, there are 50 trees. The other thing is the tool we're using is called a cane knife. And, you know, uh, John started doing tree work in the San Francisco Bay Area. He came over and like a lot of guys that come over, they, they try everything. They, they use the handsaw, they use the chainsaw, all the modern equipment that we have. And it turns out that the best tool for these is just what the locals, what the Hawaiians have been using for like 100 years. Hawaii used to be, you know, Oahu used to be a big sugarcane producing place. And that was the tool of choice. And they're still using it. And it's just the most efficient way to, to do this. I posted some videos on Instagram and some people were saying that it's not the best way to cut palm trees. I, I live in Arizona and I live here and there. And one thing I learned on this trip is that palm trees are quite different from one another. So the cane knife is used for the coconut trees, but not for the others. So there are lots there, you know, there, there are Mexican fan palms and there are date palms and cocos. And what I've learned is that arborists in different regions, they will cut those trees quite differently. Even in Hawaii, they have many species of palms and they only use the cane knife on the cocoa, but like 80% of the palms that they do are coconut trees. They're very common on Oahu and in Hawaii in general. The other thing is the, the climbing spurs. Usually it's generally it's good practice not to spike living trees, you know, but, the, but what you have to understand is a few things about these coconut trees. First of all, there are a lot of cocos, way more than anybody can manage on the island. I mean, lots of them. So John will do contracts that they have to do a thousand coconut trees, you know, in a, at a resort or something. And they'll have to do that two or three times a year. So they've got a lot of coconut trees to do. And there's just not that much money in it if you're going to be doing it really slowly. He came over and he tried everything, you know, just like the Californian way, you know, trying to set lines. And, you know, they also have tree stands and stuff trying to do it every which way possible. And it, he said he hated it for years. Eventually he just went to some Polynesian guys who had been doing it for decades and they taught him the traditional Hawaiian way to maintain the coconut trees. And now it's like his favorite thing. It's the fastest way to do it. The trees look pretty mangled on the bark, but they, they live, they're just fine. Um, I guess it's a little different in some areas. Like he will use tree stands, like for instance, on Maui where the resorts are younger, some of those palms, they haven't been spiked and they're mature. So they've got a really smooth trunk. So they will set up stands for some other trees, but there's really no point in setting up, you know, tree stands and stuff like that to do cocos that have already been spiked before because, you know, they, the, the holes are already there. But, you know, basically it's just a lot of cocos to do and it's just not very, you know, it, it's just so much faster to just do it this way. And, and the tourists don't even know. I actually mentioned the holes to my wife after we were there for like a week and she didn't even know what I was talking about. The tourists actually don't really even notice the holes, but arborists definitely do. So that's so, some of the things I just wanted to talk about. Um, I'll get right to the video now, but that's just some of the stuff that I wanted to cover. All right, let's get to it. All right, well, today's a special day. We're gonna be doing some cocoa pruning, the first time I've ever done that. So. So this is John's cocoa saddle. He uses this as a separate saddle for cocos. How often do you sharpen that? Usually once a year. Once a year? Yeah. 
usually a couple times a day, depending. Oh, on, really? That often? Yeah. I mean, if it if you got a farm that has a lot of paper and crap in it, it ends up rolling your knife and just going through it. Really? Yeah. Probably depending on the knife and how sharp it is and how many what cocos you're doing. Usually anywhere from one, two, sometimes three or four times in a day. I'll, I'll just put an edge on it. What's this knife called? This is a this we call style them cane knives. Cane knives? We call them cane knives, but they're actually cane knives, and they use them in sugar cane. The you know in Hawaii, the sugar cane was a big industry for decades, and they would this knife's designed to cut sugar cane, and then you use the back end right here to pick up clusters and move them. So guys would you know you're going through the field and they're cutting the base of the sugar cane, and then moving them with this little hook. This hook's kind of useful. A lot of cocoa guys here cut it off because you end up, you're swinging so much, you can catch your ear. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, so guys end up cutting this off a lot. I keep it because I like grabbing stuff up high in the head and pulling it down towards me. Yeah. So I keep mine on, but it is, it can be dangerous if you're swinging too much and you end up clipping your ear, or grabbing something on accident. Yeah. Yeah, like this one doesn't have a hook. Yeah, so it's probably better. So I want to take everything off my saddle then? Yeah, I would. It's less stuff. Nothing down. So just spiking up, spiking down? That's, you can see my setup right yeah. there. There's nothing on it. The only thing I have on it is this. Right. For your, is that for your knife? Yeah. And I bought a short flip line just for these. Morning. Yeah, this is nice. This is warm rain. Yeah, hopefully, I'm hoping it'll just burn off. So are we doing all the cocos here? Yeah. That is a lot of up and down. Good morning. Good morning. We'll knock those out and then we just go to climbing. Okay. Yeah. I've got to work with him a little bit on the head. Yeah, so what kind is this right here? This is a date palm. This is a date palm? Yep. Oh, okay. Hey, Sal, this is Jacob. Oh, hey. Jacob is Sal. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Did you recognize the Thanks. beard? We're, we're gonna do some cocoa training on the on the head. You wanna, you'll do these? Yeah. I might get him and I started on some of these. But when we get up so. there, I'll kind of go over it and you can watch me a little bit. And obviously you're not gonna be like banging through palms. It's a process, like anything. It's like okay. in the head, you know. Stacy, what are you doing on this crew? What happened? Not kidding. Steven told me. Yeah, I know <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he told me. He's, I, I get, clocked in. I get to work. I know. I know. I'm, <laughs> I'm just giving you a hard time. No, I was like, yeah, bring Stacy. We're stoked. <laughs> I was like, oh, they need me for clean. Cocos, yeah. <laughs> so I think we should do some ones that are kind of next to each other. Do you hang on to the fronds and toss them for like this one? It's like right yeah. over the roof. Yeah. So that's another part is you want to do. You want to kind of control them because yeah. we'll probably break these awnings down, but you still don't want to be hitting all the right, okay. all the stuff with them. Yeah, so I'll kind of go over that too. Maybe we can start with some of these out in in this area. If you go up this one, then I'll go up this one. Okay. And then you can kind of watch. This one's a little taller. So actually, if you can try to avoid hitting, we'll drop that awning. If you go that one, because if I'm taller, you'll be able to see me a little better. You know what I'm saying? Because you'll be looking up versus trying to look down and back. So what I think actually I'll do is I'll go up, I'll go up this guy. So when you're up there, you can be looking out okay. at me. You know what okay. I mean? Yeah. Because I want you to kind of look at it to see it a little bit before you okay. just start chopping through the yeah. head. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here's your knife. Good thing we did them like six months ago, so they're not super loaded. So uh, that metal thing, what are those for? Yeah, they, I don't know. They put these things on so they think that, I, I guess it helps, but the rats can run up the palms and then they jump off the fronds into buildings. So a lot of people put those on so the rats can't go up them. But what ends up happening is the guys spike right through them. They put little holes and then the rats can just climb right <laughs> past them. So I wouldn't worry too much about them. Most of them have been spiked already. That's why I just hang it like that? Is that what you do? Yeah. 
pretty much as long as that yeah that thing's pretty secure your little buck thing yeah um the other thing i do which you you do got to be a little careful with because you don't want to cut your elbow but i hold mine like this and that yeah. catches it if you accidentally drop like let go oh, of it. okay because you don't want your ground guy underneath you right or something and ends up falling from yeah 60 feet or whatever so okay i hold it like this and then a lot of times when i rotate i'll just hang it and kind of walk around the front the head okay but if you let go accidentally through a cut i've never had this happen but it could come back up into you so right you but i'd rather kind of deal with that and end up dropping it on the guys right something. okay plus if you drop it you got to come all the way back down get it and walk yeah. all the way back up yeah. and so you were saying like early on you you would like bring a climbing line and you'd yeah. Yeah. do all that stuff but yeah. over, over the years you just found it's just just so much well, faster just do it this way well no what happened was we were doing more and more palms not like getting them done but we had more to do so i had to like try to keep up with how many we could get done yeah. like you know we take on a contract that have 500 or a thousand palms so you'd have huh. to run through them and i was finding that like i was spending a lot of time just managing the rope and yeah. so sometimes on really tall ones i'll take the line just because it's a lot of spiking when you walk back down on like an 80 foot palm yeah but most of the time i found i could just run through them kind of like what you're talking about on furs where the guys that just walk up the trees yeah end yeah. up just smoking Good, the so guys many, that are trying yeah. to set lines and run around and deal with the rope and it's a little bit like that you know whoa dang that's like yeah that's like rock hard yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so you're not even in the tree a lot so they get better as you go up you'll feel they'll get softer okay higher up especially the old ones like this are like concrete at the bottom so that's the area where you're more likely to slide your gaff okay so it's really and it's one of those things like just in trees too like you are kind of gonna gaff out eventually <laughs> yeah not a big deal if you if your body position's right and what I mean by that is, you see my hands right here? Yeah. See how I'm kind of, I'm gripped around the, the flip line? Yeah, like real close to the trunk? Yeah, like my hands are curled like this. Yeah. And my thumbs are actually what I do. I mean, different guys do it differently, but what I do is I put my thumbs here and it helps me kind of, just a little bit of a balancing thing. Okay. And then if you slip, you come off your gaps, you end up, you end up your, your arms are, and your hands are naturally clenching onto the yeah i see what you're saying in between steps you don't really think about it but you're kind of gripping into the palm okay there's so many gaff holes in this <laughs> it's crazy yeah somebody you like that pruning job right there <laughs> That's ironwood? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty wobbly. Yeah. So, okay, so what do I do? Oh, hey, these are the coconuts. Yeah. I found the coconuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So remember what we were talking about? That's like golf ball, a little bit bigger. Yeah, they're like the size of a mango. Yeah, a small mango, yep. All right, what do I do now? um <laughs> cut the paper watch what i'm doing so can you can you get that frond out of your way right there, right there. So, yeah i just chop it take your knife and cut the base of it like see this right here see how it just peels open yep yep now push now push down on the frond yeah yeah see there you go peel it down okay now now you can kind of see me better yeah Maybe take the next one off too, so you can see real nicely. Oh, these are light. Yeah, some of them are light. Some get heavier than others. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and take that one off. Okay, what? Hang it like that, Jacob. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to just clear it so you can see me okay. 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 Okay, so you see all this stuff I was talking about? Of the paper? Yeah, that's the stuff that's gonna mess your knife up and it stops you from cutting through. Okay. So what we're normally doing is just slicing it. I like to get it out of there. See how now it's like real clean and open. 
there's no paper here you just got to really be careful with your thumbs and your fingers because when you're slicing i've actually taken part of my nail off oh really yeah so why don't you can just watch what i'm doing okay you see this you got to get rid of all these little clusters So do I just leave the upright fronds or do I leave yeah. the sideways ones? Yeah, you see this right here? See how it's nice and horizontal? Yeah. Those are staying, these ones are going. So everything fate pointing down. Yeah, is coming off. Yep. Okay. That's a big little coconut. Yeah, and this is what we would call kind of a you see jacob yeah see how it leans yeah so when you're on the back side normally when the tree's upright you can work all the sides yeah. but on a leaner you got to be on the top side or the back side because you can't stay on the side of them <laughs> right because you just end up rotating <laughs> yeah what about those real steep leaners you, you do those too yeah you kind of figure out little tip or tricks to uh to deal with those Working the head. Do I, so do I have to remove all the paper stuff throughout the whole head? Kind of. I mean, you don't have to go real crazy on all the stuff buried inside. But when you open the front, you want to open that area up with the paper. Okay. So, such weird growth. Yeah. And I cut these things off. For, yeah, these are, these are the cocos. Man, this is weird. Jacob, you can kind of see what it ends up looking like. You see my head? Yeah, mine's uh, going a lot slower than that one. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, it's... You know what happens if you don't get the, the frond to peel open? It's really hard to clean all that stuff out. If I don't get the frond to peel open? Yeah, yeah so like you see how I... I don't know if you were watching, but when I nicked the corner, the frond opens up, and when it's laying down, you can really get all that crap off of it. Even lower on the frond, low, like right at the heel. Yeah, even, even lower on the frond, low, like right at the heel. And let it hang open? Yep, there you go. And now once it's open, you start cleaning all that crap that's in there, that old, you know, the old dead stuff from way before. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of like process at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Are you done already? Yeah. So like, what about this stuff? Like this paper up here? You don't have to worry about that as much. It's more the, the paper that's lodged in between the fronds that you're taking off. Okay, so that's it's the paper the, around the fronds I'm taking off. Yeah. yeah, that's the stuff you gotta get out for two reasons. It's easy to cut through once it's gone. And then it doesn't, you don't want the paper showing. Do you see my head is, to, is done? Yeah. You can see all the bases there. You don't want to see brown oh, okay. paper. Oh, okay. I, I see. Okay. And then, so take the fronds that are going down and then take all the cocos off. Yep. And that's it. And then the bullets. You see the bullets are the ones, that guy's a bullet. No, right by your left, right where you're touching that bullet. Yeah. Oh, this? That's a bullet. So that, that was what I was talking about with that hook. Yeah. Sometimes I use my hook if they're real high up and peel those down and do exactly what you did, peel it down, and then you tap it just like you tapped your... Yep, that's it. What about, so the thing in the very middle, that tall pointy thing? thing. You leave that alone. That's the that's where the, all the growth is happening. So, the, okay, so that pointy part, I take that. What does this become? That becomes the cluster. All those little flowers are inside of there. Oh. 
That's like just an earlier stage of the spiders there. Oh, and this is the spider, like these things? Yeah once, yeah, once they pop out, you see that brown dead sheath behind the spider? Uh, yeah, this? Yep. Yep, oh, that's okay. that's what that it was before it burst open. Oh, okay. That's, that's the what bullet. That it was before. Okay. And so like this one's good? Yep, that's good. Okay. Yeah, you only have, let's see, one, two, three more fronds to take off. So now your big thing is going to be trying to clean up the bases with your knife yeah because you got a bunch of stubs sticking out okay it's kind of like pruning a tree you don't want stubs right yeah yeah okay <laughs> wow this is hard Yeah, Jacob. Looking good. <laughs> I noticed yours is a lot less mangly looking than mine. Well, yeah, I mean, I think I I really needed to get closer it's a, to the it's base. A it's a it's a pra it's a practice thing, like anything. Yeah, this is bizarre. Oh yeah, I already hit my flip line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I see what you're saying. Yeah, you don't want rope lanyards, that's for sure. Yeah, steel core all the way. Yeah, all these cocoa guys, all their flip lines look mangled. All right, going underneath. Man, this is so bizarre. <laughs> I like to get these out of my way because if you cut them with, if you leave those spiders when you're hitting your knife, they get in your way and they kind of block your, your hit when you're trying to get the fronds off. Because you want to spend as little energy as possible with the, um, trying to chop through everything. So once it's real clear, you don't have to like sit there and whack at it over and over again and end up being beat up at the end of the day too much. It's just like what I was telling Jacob, some of this paper ends up, well it looks cleaner when you get most of it cut out, but it also end up blocking your your knife just bounces right off of it. This is coming off. This we probably would keep because they're nice upright. So we want to keep these, these low ones, come off. But with this guy, because it's leaning, it's really hard on a leaner to stay on the side of it. So you end up having to work want the top side and then kind of the back side, which makes it a little harder because you don't have as much of an angle on your hit sometimes on when you're cutting. So this guy's a little low, so I'm gonna end up just getting him out. Well, I like to get these little spiders out of here. Get that paper cleared, paper opened up. So now it's actually pretty clean right here. It's not a lot of crap in my way. This guy might be in the way. So what I can do is chop him out. The other thing you're trying to do is hit it where you're not cutting through it and nicking your front behind it. Because then what happens, is you come back a week or whatever, there's wind, you see a bunch of your fronds hanging, and then they go, the local boys go, oh, John's guys cut those trees, look at all those hangers. <laughs> or they end up hitting people more importantly. Heads up! The other thing is, 
these fronds go sailing when the wind's going, so you gotta be kind of careful. So yeah, here's a bullet. Ow. G'day. So we try to not leave this because we want to look up here and just see a nice yellow green head. So a lot of the times we're taking these off. So now when we look at up from the ground, we want that nice clean plastic look. Okay, so what do you think? Is this does this look good? Not really, but it's getting there. <laughs> hey, for your first cocoa, it's good. <laughs> okay. It's it's gonna take some time just getting used to it, you know? So now what do I just kind of pick this paper out and chop it closer? Yeah, try if you can just try hitting it so you get a lot of that loose stuff off. Okay. You can kind of tap it and get it, see if you can get it off. Yeah, there you go. Yep. Try not to hit the frond when you're doing it. Yeah. There you go, nice, yeah. That's just cleaning up your head up at the end there. Okay. Yeah. These guys want to get out. Yeah, so we really, when we're looking from the ground, we want to see a nice, a nice uh, yellow base. And then this one is a little, I went a little hard on the hit, I was too close and I took the butt off. Depending on how far in you go, that's pretty pretty close to the base so probably what i'll do here is i just like a tree we reduce some of the weight and the way i do that is reach out take some of the weight off the end that way when the wind picks up hopefully this stays in place and doesn't become a hanger same thing here get rid of all this paper all right how's that oh dude way better you went from like a D minus to like a C plus. <laughs> hey, that's C for passing, you know? I know, it feels like that's pretty much where I was at in high school. Heads up! Should I work this head more or go to another tree? No, it looks good. Okay. Yeah, you'll just, as you do more of them, you'll get in the rhythm. You'll start, you'll start getting a feel the more you do. Your first like, 500 palms are a nightmare. Okay. So by the end of the day, you'll be good. <laughs> 499 to go. Yep. As you see, there are fewer spike marks up here because palms are what they call a monocot. They only grow in one direction. They just grow up. You know, trees, most trees are die cots. They grow up and they grow out. That's why trees get fatter and taller over time because they're adding layers of wood. And that's why you can tell their age when you cut them down because by counting the rings, see how much, you know, because every year they put on one layer of wood in the growing season. Whereas palms, they just grow up. So they don't ever get wider and they don't ever, they don't compartmentalize. They don't close wounds like other trees. And that's why you see all these old spike marks. So generally speaking, because I'm a, a palm expert now. So <laughs> as of <laughs> the last hour or so, but generally speaking, a palm, these, these uh, cocos grow about a foot a year. So if it's a 60 foot coco, it's uh, 60 years old approximately. You can see as I get lower, I'm seeing more and more spike marks. It's just the easiest, safest way to climb these, most efficient. And the trees really don't seem to mind very much. But these cocos are really dangerous if left alone because they drop these super heavy coconuts. Oh, I gotta focus. The wood is like concrete down here. And this one is kind of borderline. What I mean by borderline, it's a little lower than I like to leave them. So I'll probably just take it off so that it's not, I mean, sometimes you don't want to over prune these, but what I mean is take all these fronds, just leave them, we call them pineappling them, where you just leave, you know, half a dozen fronds straight up and down that stresses the, the palms out but you also don't want to leave too much on where they're just hanging low and dropping fronds in the wind and you know the goal here is to make them safe for people to be underneath them that's why we're doing it so yeah and the, the other problem with this these leaners hang on cutting is a lot harder so I, I would normally cut from the other side and then hold it it's up. So this is a little rougher than I like it to look. 
So we'll come in and we'll just clean it. Same thing here. Now my guys and I have cut all cut our fingers from that slicing technique. So that's one that you got to be real careful of when you're slicing your paper off. You don't, you're not grabbing it. And I took the tip of my thumbnail off one time. It's not fun. So the really good climber can do 30 of these in one day. But he likes his guys to do about 20, which is nuts. The other thing, guys, you know, it is not easy on your legs, obviously, climbing goes, but what I've tried to do, and my guys too, we talk a lot about it, is when you put your spike in, you don't slam it in because you, if you slam in your spike on every step, you end up really tearing your legs up. Like when I was first doing it, I used to just beat my shins up from just really hitting the cocos way too hard. And you're doing it in the beginning a lot because you're, you're worried that your foot's gonna, your gas gonna come out. But there's a couple of techniques I was telling Jacob, the way you hold your lanyard, if you do gaff out, you're gonna cinch in. And then the other thing, another trick, Bonnie taught me, he's been doing cocos for decades. He said, if the tree gets really rock hard in your foot placement, your gaffs aren't going in, mentally keep your toes pointed up it changes the angle of your gaff more into the tree a lot less likely that you're going to come sliding out i think everybody here is legally obligated to maintain these trees and most people do it twice a year so two times a year climbers have come out they spike up these chop the cocos down while they're small so not only have these trees been spiked like this tree's you know 45 feet tall so it's, <laughs> it's been spiked twice a year for 45 years. It is really wobbly. Yeah, and usually what I found too is you just follow the old gaff marks because it's usually the right side of the tree to be on wherever the old gaff holes are so you're not like on the underside walking up you always want to be on the top side area gets you know you're right by the water so we get a lot of Oh, that looks great, Jacob. You like that one? That one looks really good. Cool. Yeah, it, 
that one made a lot more sense than the first yeah. one. Sometimes the smaller heads Dude, are a little seriously. bit easier. Well, okay. Well, now I don't feel so good. <laughs> what do you mean? I was, like, I was like, yeah, I feel like I'm getting the hang of it. You're like, yeah, the smaller ones are easier. Oh, no, no, yeah. No, you get it. I mean, sometimes just in terms of the fronds, seeing what's going on, the big heads oh, can yeah, be a let lot. Me, let me adjust this. Um, so why don't you do this one so you can look down at what I'm doing. Okay. That was great. It feels kind of cool being this lightweight, like just come down and just go right to another tree, you know? Yeah, that's why I was, that's another reason, like you're not dragging ropes through and like right. basically trying to restring lines. It probably saves so much time. Yeah, it does. Yeah, so if you just hang right there, Jacob. Yeah. So you can see what I'm doing on the head. Okay. I'm left-handed. You are? What are you right? Yeah. So, because I'm left-handed, I usually, what you'll do is you'll actually spin right around the tree. Because you want to be at this angle as you're moving. So if you're left, you're going to want to go right. If you're right-handed, you're going to want to spin left. Okay. And that'll keep your angle nice for when you're cutting. Right. Yeah. So, what I do, see the heel right here? See how that's now open? So now I don't, usually what I do is I just let it hang and then I kind of like to clean my area. The other thing I've found, this stuff right here, a lot of times will block your hit when you're coming in to hit this. Yeah. So what I do is I usually hang it, clean it, and then get this stuff out of the way. And the whole idea is we're trying to open our, our, our lane up so that we can just make one quick, easy cut. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. yeah. So we'll take this one off too. So same thing, this stuff's gotta come out. Paper's gotta be clean. And then yeah, since- it just comes right out when it's hanging. Yeah, exactly. And I take this guy off so it doesn't block my hit. Same thing here. And then, boom. See how it's open? Now my lane's totally open. I got nothing blocking me. Boom. See that? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's like anything, the more you practice, the easier it gets, you know? Yeah. But if you know the technique a little bit, it'll really help. And so that's why I spin right, because I want to always be working like this. You're right-handed, so you'll want to spin left, so you're working like that. Okay. Yeah. That's what I do when I'm stripping out like a fur with a bunch of limbs too. I'll, I'll yeah, work so the branches Yeah, so your chainsaw bar is on the right side, yeah. you know? So then I'll go here, take that one out, bend that down. Clean my paper out. Just like your uh, cutting steak at home. That's it. And then sometimes I'll come back and just, I'll work backwards and clean my edges off. Okay. That's pretty much it. It's done. Wow, so you're done with that tree? Yep, pretty much. Nice job. But you know, once you once you see the way that the head's growing, yeah. yeah, and you see the layers, you can really understand how to like cut through it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe take one or two steps up a little higher. Yeah, there you go, right in there. <laughs> uh, yeah those are uh <laughs> those get the heart rate going yeah yeah it's so bad it's like it starts to bend and you're like uh please stop bending like i said though like these things are so it's tough crazy it's crazy how you're just like bouncing around up there like not even thinking about it
So this beach right here, it's called K Keiki Beach, but you can't tell right now because there's not a lot of swell, but in the winter when there's, well, we're in the winter, but when we have big swells, this is one of the heaviest shore breaks, surf spots in the world. I mean, guys don't really surf here, they surf right down there. But this is where a lot of those like shots in the barrel are from right here, literally right here. Man, how do you get back on the top of this thing? <laughs> yeah, so what I do is I use the fronds. Yeah, that one's tough because you're such a skinny head. You may have to just walk down the backside a little bit, come down a little bit on the backside. Yeah, and then as it straightens up, you can spin on it. <laughs> the real skinny leaners are hard to flip around on. Yeah, I've done that a couple times where I walk down. I was watching you, I was like, okay, he just slides right around. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's a tougher one you're on, actually. <laughs> Send them up a harder one. I think I'm almost done with this one. I, I'm, I'm just gonna try to. No, you're good right there. Yeah. I just want to clean up this back one a little bit. Oh yeah, you've got one little bullet sticking out. You see it? No, no, no. It's, well, that one, and then the one, the other one too. Yeah. Oh. And then watch your hand when you chop. Yeah. Keep your hand. His hands getting real close there. Hey Sal, Oi. that one's okay, I can land it right there, it's good. Don't want to do 
didn't know there were going to be ants up there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there could be a lot of things up there. Right? <laughs> Centipedes, rats. Oh, man. How you doing? Yeah. I've done four. That's really so, good. Oh, really? I was gonna be like two for you today if it would be great. So. <laughs> if you're at four, you're killing it. You end up loving it so much you moved to Hawaii to do cocos. <laughs> Which tree you're going up this one? Sure. Okay. Yeah, except the last one I wasn't expecting a bunch of ants to fall out. <laughs> I like rolled on the underside, cut a frond right above me and like oh, yeah, ants just poured out. Yeah. Cocos can be pretty nasty, like centipedes and ants and rats. Some resorts have to do it three times a year. So because of that, it's, these are actually a really good 
reliable source of income because people get on you know maintenance plans and it's like guaranteed work every six months you know Oh, they're heavy. Oh, yeah. oh, they're 
smaller heavy. Is that all the prints? Uh, yeah, one more in the front and yeah, one removal. Take this this one down. This one's a removal? Yeah. Can I do it? Uh, yeah. You wanna go in a bucket? Is that the best way to do it? It's gonna be a lot easier. Uh, yeah, I'll do it in the bucket then. <laughs> and how big of pieces of wood um, do I cut? You can just chuck them down to as big as... Whatever's easiest? Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe like with pieces so we can chip it out. You chip it? Okay. Man, these always confuse me. So where are you from? I'm from Seattle. Yeah, have you ever been? Um, I never been to Seattle, Washington, but my mom did. Your mom did? I told her, as Hawaii squirrels out, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to get squirrels, yeah. So my yeah. mom was playing with them in a tree when my auntie was living there. Do you have squirrels? Like the squirrels that they get up in Seattle. Yeah, you have them too? No. Oh, you don't? My mom took pictures and said, what's like big oh. stuff of it? Oh, that's funny.
first palm removal. It's almost like looks like a piece of sugar cane or something. Like no rings at all. We get no rings. So weird. Okay, you want me to cut the wood now or wait? Chunk them down. Cut them down. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And whenever I'm working with new crews, I always ask because some people are real particular. They want to clean up every piece as you go. I cut, they clean, I cut, they clean. Some people just want to make a mess, clean it all at once, so. Whenever I'm working with different new crews, I always ask, do you want me to cut or do you want me to wait? Because uh, this is a really good way to make everybody upset if you, <laughs> if you get that wrong. Fronds are so weird. They're so long, but they, they're hard to hold, but they don't really weigh that much. Oh, yeah. Just, it's hard to get your hands around them. Yeah. But they're just so wide. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. what these things look like when they've never been spiked. <laughs> this looks so different though. It's so nice and smooth. Yeah, John was telling me when he moved out here, he moved out here from the Bay Area and he started doing cocos and tried every way possible, setting the ropes and like trying to do them without spikes and trying to, you know, do all, trying every way possible and just eventually realized that the, the people who've been doing it forever here just know the best way. So he just started doing it like, like the Hawaiians do and it's fine. So that's just the only way to get a bunch of these done. 
<laughs> you can tell. You can tell which one's been spiked. Uh, on. Can you open one for him? <laughs> yeah, how do you open these? Oh, thank you. Man, that's amazing. All right, we're wrapping it up for the day. So, I, I think we're wrapping it up for the day. We printed 50 palm trees. <laughs> we did all those. They're actually pretty fast. I mean, the other guys did way more than I did. I think I did eight or nine, and there were 50. And there were four climbers, so everybody did more than me. But what a learning curve. So yeah, that was my first experience with palm trees. There are all sorts of types of palms. These are cocos, you know, coconut trees. And I guess that's <laughs> I guess that's how you maintain and remove these super weird no growth rings, those crazy old spur marks. I mean so many spur marks. But anyways, we're about done. I hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can support my travels in this channel at patreon.com slash treason. You can buy my signature coffee at backwoodsgrind.com slash treason. It's really good. It's a dark roast. It's actually really good coffee. And you can reach out to me at guiltyoftreason1 at gmail.com. So please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.